Okay, welcome to Sandpoint, Idaho. Spoke with quite a few local activists, one who used to be part of a fundamentalist church, some very far right groups that have gotten people into positions of political power in this community, has since defected and started organizing against fascists. This area has a super interesting history of fighting white supremacist and fascist violence. In the 80s and 90s, there was a group here called the Aryan Nations that built a big compound outside of town and the locals successfully pushed them out. I'm told by people who live here that when white supremacists would do something, when they would vandalize a store or a restaurant, when they would march through the streets, there was always a local response. Today I'm talking to Tony Stewart, who was one of the locals who organized uh, to help push out the Aryan Nations back in the 90s. He was one of the leaders of that effort and he's still around here today. Tonight I'm on the campus of North Idaho College. I'm here because several of my sources have told me that I should really come to this meeting. In fact, many people have told me it's gonna be wild. Lots of us for, are familiar with a lot of stories about how school boards across the country have become proxies for some of the really big political debates and quote unquote culture war issues. And I'm told that more or less the same thing has happened with North Idaho College. Because of issues with governance and management, the college has also been at risk of losing its accreditation, which obviously would be a huge blow to this whole community. And so that's been a big fight. Locals are really working to try and organize and oust some of the far right trustees but especially with an election coming up in November. Not for those trustee seats, but just for other local seats. I can expect a lot of grandstanding. And uh, yeah, again, the word I heard many times was wild. So what happened is that the Kootenai County Republican Central Committee, which is like the governing body of the Republican Party here in Kootenai County, basically got taken over by far-right extremists. Part of their strategy, they started running people for all these local offices that technically are nonpartisan. So the library board is another one. And then this board of trustees for North Idaho College is another community college. It's a really huge part of the local economy here. It's a huge employer. And then obviously it also offers you know, two-year degrees and lots of vocational training for people who live here and then work here locally. Really important to the community. And the board of trustees was essentially taken over by far-right candidates who were endorsed by this Republican Central Committee. The board of trustees really devolved into dysfunction. As a result, the college has been at the risk of losing its accreditation. These meetings have been very contentious. It sounds like the one I sat through tonight was a little less uh, intense than some of the past ones have been this year. There, there was one woman who stormed out and did call the trustees Nazis. There was a little bit of conflict tonight, particularly in the beginning of the meeting where um, there's a public comment period. Community members are, are really mad and there's been a big organizing effort here in the community, led in part by one of the sources I interviewed today called Save NIC, Save North Idaho College. There were a lot of very involved community members there. At one point, one of those far right board members actually suggested that the public should be ejected from the meeting after a few people maybe made comments out of turn while listening in, but mostly people were just clapping when they agreed with stuff. And he and the chair of the board, who's another one of those far right members, were very upset by that. If you're wondering what all of that has to do with abortion, what it has to do with abortion is that one of the strategies that a lot of far right groups are using here and elsewhere and we hear about this a lot when it comes to school boards, right? This is just the college version of it, is that they get people into these seemingly inconsequential small local seats. And it's really those positions which often are nonpartisan technically, have so much influence over people's lives in the community and often people who then get established in those positions, like on a school board or on a library board, work their way up to hold higher office. And it puts pressure on the Republican Party kind of coming up from those lower level positions as well. So even if there aren't a lot of super extreme far right members of the state legislature yet, although I, I would call Idaho's abortion bans quite extreme, even though there aren't a ton of, you know, 
overt Christian nationalists, shall we say, in the state legislature yet. They're feeling the pressure from that Christian nationalist takeover of Republican Party organizations on the local level. They feel that pressure to embrace more extreme policies because otherwise they could get unseated. So several of the people I spoke with here in town today are Republicans. We're trying to get that Republican Central Committee to disassociate itself from these fascists. And it's tough because a lot of the people who live here don't feel represented by what's going on, but they're also afraid to speak up because these far-right extremists are really, really nasty. They really come after people in a personal way when they speak up. What I did see at the meeting tonight is that community members are are really pushing back, and especially when it comes to protecting the college here, where a lot of them went, they feel really strongly about that. So I left Coeur d'Alene. I'm on my way south, making a couple of stops along the way as I head down to Boise, which is the capital of Idaho. But I just wanted to stop and show you the snow. It's uh, turning to winter up here in North Idaho, although when I get down to Boise, I expect it to actually be quite a bit warmer, but here's a little early, early winter beauty for you.